Hey everyone, Thoughts Eve here with Team 870, Team Rice, checking out their really amazing robot elevator on the side instead of how you would usually see it. Really exciting to see a lot of pneumatics in this robot as well, and really excited to walk through their robot here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-paced camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Annie Marcus Parts and Products designed specifically for First Through Box competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. All right, Declan, let's start off with you. Talk to me about your intake that you have over here. It seems really small, but I assume there's a lot more into it than what's actually here. Yeah, so um, this is what we call our horn. And it has three different heights. It has floor height, uh, cube height, and then all the way up. It's pretty unique. Uh, we were set on this idea from like day one. You're seeing a lot of roller intakes this year, but honestly, we just decided that this would be simple and efficient. So how it works is we grab cones from the uh, laying down orientation. We can knock them over if they're standing up. So it'll f grab it like that, flip it up, and then obviously the pneumatics work, this clamp, which Flynn will be talking about later. And then, yeah, I don't know, you can unclamp it. But um, that's how the cone part of it works. And then for grabbing cubes off the floor, it's the same type of idea, but uh, we have this little arm right here. This is probably one of the last things we actually worked on on the robot. Uh, we honestly had no idea what we were going to do on how to grab the cubes. We were thinking about putting a box on the side of our robot that could flip cubes out from the human loader station. But we ended up just going with this claw because it worked with the horn the right way. So, right. Yeah. And then in terms of grabbing off of the human loading stations, we have our side station, our single loader, which basically this is propped up to the right height where we can just slide the cone right down the slide. And then uh, Brian will flip it up. And same thing, and then for the back station, we have it set to the back station right there. So it'll just pick it up right off of the floor. And well, this is honestly a really unique season. I haven't seen this before, and I love how it works. Let's just transition into the elevator. Uh, Flynn, you're gonna, sorry. You're gonna be talking about the pneumatics. Yes. Flynn, tell us about the pneumatic system. We saw a little demo. Yeah. But tell us how exactly it functions. So our pneumatic system starts with our compressor on the bat side of the robot, where it's fed to through these table tubes to allow the arm to stretch out to full length if you want to bring it up to mid height about. These two sets of hoses supply the pneumatics to the extender to allow the arm to reach out, but then also the clamps for the cube and cone intake. So if you want to go up to the high stage. We have a two-stage pneumatic system with two separate, uh, I think, 12-inch pistons going on a double track system. Actually, triple track, because there's a track up there, too. I missed that one. But yeah, we use pneumatics to uh, be real quick and snappy rather than motorized, so that gives us a more faster pace and it's more reliable. And our we have our two storage tanks on the back right there. Pressure switches, all the vitals. Yeah. Of course, keeping it legal as well, yep. with pneumatics being, I would say, a pretty complicated system, but overall works really well when you when you set it up all perfectly well. You seem like you guys have set it really well. Good explanation on why you guys do pneumatics over uh, motorized. So let's move it to Sophia for actually on the elevator. Tell us how the elevator works. Why did you guys choose a side instead of like how other people just have it instead? We chose to go with a side elevator. That way our arm would be in the center of the robot that way we could line up directly with the bumper on the side of the little legs that come out on the grid our elevator is motorized by two falcon 500s on the other side hidden by the 870 plate over here which act as the winch motor they ride up on a double track system on our pieces and then are lifted by a seatbelt, which are set to different heights depending on where we need to go whether we're placing it on the grid at the mid or high level, or we're picking up a piece from the side station or the back station. So with your presets, of course the nodes are also at a different depth as well. So when you guys are going to your presets, do you, does the pistons also extend as well to those presets as well? Yes, they're a little bit delayed, as, although that way we don't hit and right. say we're going to the high node, we, want, we don't want to crash into the mid node as we're going up. So it's elevator first and then the extensions. Yes. 
really unique system. Again, such a unique intake as well. Haven't seen this before. And really glad that it's been working out really well for you guys as well. Team Rice, eight, 870. Thank you for taking the time to walk us around your robot and good luck for the rest of the event. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.